Lawrence Owen and Julian Blanc sitting here on top of a rooftop in a parking structure in Dallas, Texas. Here to talk to you about how to build massive, massive social skills and supercharge the fuck out of your personality. This is gonna be a skill set that you can use even if you're flat broke and a fucking loser to get great friends, to climb the social ladder, and to meet the types of inspirational and motivational people who you will need to turn around your entire life. This video is gonna show you powerful nuances about improvising, about humor. It's gonna teach you details about humor that most people would never, ever have any idea about. And you will know so much about social skills, socializing, how to be funny, how to riff, how to be expansive, that your friends will be blown away. This is one of my favorite videos that Julie and I have ever recorded. It might be my very favorite. So you are in for a very, very powerful experience, but I need you to lock in and really commit to this. Any other thoughts before we launch in? Brace yourself. Like This is the shit that really got us to where we're at. It's the one thing we had when we started out, like when we were fucking at the beginning of it all. Um, and it's honestly like the closest things to superpowers you could fucking get, especially nowadays with social media where everyone's just behind a screen, not socializing. You get this down, you are a fucking god. <laughs> People were saying they were laughing harder at this than they laughed in years. Yeah. You're gonna laugh your fucking ass off. This is fun. It's an adventure. Lock in right now. Make the fucking time. We're doing it right now. One, two, three. <laughs> Let's say that I go into a room full of high level people and I wanna walk out with every single main, say there's a bunch of marketers, business owners, women I'm attracted to, and fr friends that I think are funny, experts that I think are cool. How am I gonna work a room like that? Let's, talk, let, let's, let's look at what it, what it looks like and then we'll talk about the actual skills to it. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in there and the most important thing is I'm gonna enjoy myself as much as humanly possible. So what you're gonna notice is the cool kids are always the ones having the most fun, straight up. Whoever's having the most fun is always the coolest person. That is why if I'm even doing an RC video, I'm gonna make sure there's lots of jokes in it. I'm gonna make sure that we're having fun. Anybody who I shoot with, do you wanna know how I shoot videos? I'll teach you how I do it. Say me and Julian are gonna go shoot a video. I will take Julian out for food. I'll say, Julian, come grab food. And he's like, okay, let's grab food. And then I'll start to joke around. I'll start shooting the shit. And I'll build a vibe with me and Julian. I do this with Luke, I do this with everybody I shoot with. And then we just get into a really good mood. We get into a talkative mood. We get it to where we're enjoying just eating lunch. And then we turn on the cameras. You see that? You guys ever re remember like Dr. Dre's classic albums, Chronic, Chronic 2001, all those? What was, why can't Dre, Dr. Dre tried to replicate that, that success in his detox album, but could never quite hit the magic. Why is that? What was he doing during Chronic 2001? A lot of, a lot of like low vibration stuff he was doing too, don't get me wrong, pretty bad some of it. But of the good stuff, of the good side of it, you know, what were guys like Death Row Records or even NWA when they started, you know, if you ever saw the movie Straight Outta Compton, what were they doing that created a magic? What was the magic of it? They're vibing with each other. They're real friends. So even if like Daz or Corrupt or Nate Dog or Lady of Rage or RBX, some of these funny names that you guys don't know because you're millennials and you're like, who are these people? <laughs> this is old man, this is rap. But okay, you're like, I listen to mumble rap now. Okay, but you see, but you see the general idea here, right? Like if you look at, take uh, Ray Shmurda. Okay, that's one maybe some of you guys relate to. You remember, you know, you know that, those kids, right? Okay, so what are they doing more than, like are they the best rappers in the world? Yeah. I think Swiley has a lot of talent, but you see my point, right? Um, there's people with more talent, but what do they do really fucking well? What did, what did Cash Money Records do with Lil Wayne, Nicki Minaj, Drake? What did they do really well? Birdman, right? Before they drank too much Cizurup and Purple Drank and they went crazy. Yeah, well, they connect with their audience, but also, like, when you watch them in their video, you just want to be there. Yeah, they connect with each other. You just want to, like, when I would look at, like, um, always strapped uh, in the club, whatever that was, I'm like, I wish I was at that fucking thing. I want to be there. That, they look so cool. I want to go to that. Like, do you not, would you not want to be at the party with, like, Dr. Dre back in the day when, like, Chronic 2001's coming out? They're in the studio. I mean, I'm not a weed guy, but, like, say they're all, most of you guys probably smoke weed, right? You're all fucking smoking weed, fucking smoking blunts, drinking, clowning around. Probably everybody's getting laid. You know, it's just hella fun, right? You want to be part of it. So the main thing when I get into an environment is I want to just start having fun with everybody there. So I have no outcome at all. And I'm gonna start bouncing around, okay? So I'm gonna start generating a massive amount of social connections. I'm gonna start bouncing around, I'm gonna to talk to people. Now here's a couple things. Number one, I'm gonna keep it light. I'm not gonna to get too heavy. It's gonna be light, it's gonna be fun. Here's why. As soon as you get heavy and you try to connect too deeply, you're gonna to get into friction. So say that you're a Democrat. Well, 
not here, right? But let's say that you're, let's say you're a Republican, you know, and then you're like, ah, I'm Republican. And then you walk up to people that are Democrats. You get too deep. They're not going to relate with you. Say that you get, you know, religious convictions. They might not relate with you. Opinions about sex. These are very trigger things, right? What is something everybody can relate to? Food. Fun, Music. enjoyment, all that stuff. So you want to relate on things that everybody can relate to. You don't want to go too deep with somebody because you look too eager to connect with people on this like super deep level. You want them kind of to earn it out of you. If they want to really get to know you, they're going to go past the facade. But there's initially the fun surface level connection. And I want you to never underestimate the value of that because what the fun surface level connection does is it allows you to connect in, in a way where you're sharing energy. So I think a lot of people are like, well, that's bullshit superficial connection. To me, that's called sharing energy. Do I want to share energy with this person? Is this person in a good enough place in their life that they can even enjoy sharing energy with me? Or is everything like this heavy fucking outcome all the time? It's just like, like, and with people where it's too heavy, what does it mean when it's too heavy? What does that imply? Massive, massive low status. People that are not relaxed and enjoying themselves immediately, um, tri uh, immediately expose themselves as low status. Okay, as soon as, you, as soon as you're nervous, you've been exposed. As soon as you're making a big deal out of it, you've been exposed. As soon as you need the picture, there's, there's counter arguments to it, there's places where it could be appropriate, but as soon as you need the picture, you've been exposed, yep. When you want to talk to some people about the common things that are fun, what do you talk about if you're not talking about deep stuff? So it's, it's honestly, like, it could be me singing. It could be me doing funny accents. It could be, like, imitating his parents. It could be me, um, it could be me uh, um, throwing stuff at people. It could be me, like, in a funny way, not like, I'm not like hurting them, okay? You're like, what are you doing, okay? Yeah, probably gotta cut that out of the video. Oh, I tried the advice from our, right? It, but like, in a funny way. It's me singing songs all the way across to, to my buddy, 100 yards away, singing with him 100 yards away while the whole environment is seeing us fucking just blowing it up with great energy. It's me teasing the prettiest girl in the room that she has a crack habit. It's me, you know, <laughs> right? Because she's smoking cigarettes and I'm going, oh my God, is that crack? She's like, it's a cigarette. I'm like, oh my God, baby, you're on crack. No, you don't need to smoke crack. We're gonna help you. And she's like, it's not crack. Oh, it is a cigarette. I'm like, baby, it's okay. Don't make excuses. We're gonna help you, right? And then, and then, like the, and then the guy he's with, she's with is like, ah, oh. and she's like, give me a high five, dude, right? And I'm like, no, no, I love you. Even the crack, you know, right? And then you just kind of joke. Okay, it's, um, it's one of those things, where, you know, a, yeah, a lot of singing, joking, laughing, enjoyment um, in the moment. It's meant to be low stress. For a low status person, a social environment is a high stress proposition. For a high status person, a social environment is a way to relax and enjoy their night. When I do a party in the Hollywood Hills in LA, I'm not doing it to be stressed. I'm doing it to enjoy myself. So the first step that you want to establish is genuine enjoyment, real enjoyment, not this bullshit enjoyment, but real enjoyment. One of the main things I use in dating, for example, is I don't worry about conveying high level stuff about myself. I just worry about, not even worry, but I just establish that she'd be comfortable around me, right? When a guy's joking around, she's like, oh, so he's not gonna text me 50 times if we have sex. Um, if, if I'm joking around, is he's not going to uh, yell at me and judge me and make a big deal out of things. This is just fun. People want to be around the fun. So even if you don't make a lot of money, even if you don't have a lot of accomplishment, what you do have right now is you can have more fun than everybody. In fact, if you're not working super hard, one of the great things you can do is easily have fun. So keep that in mind too. So that is one of the first great equalizers. The more topics you go through, the more comfort there is. Fuck. Okay? I just had a date and you guys like didn't know. Not just that, if you just talk one topic, then you become that one topic person. Yeah. Where it's like, well, can I talk about anything else with that person? And then it's awkward and there's like, eh, I'll just avoid it because we kind of exhausted that. So the more topics you go through, the more environments you go through, the more emotions you go through, the more comfort. It's like you create, you create that togetherness type of vibe. And um, yeah, the lighter the better. It's like, oh, they can actually relax. One thing I used to teach all the time with Success With Women is fun, carefree, passion. Fun, carefree, passion. That's what you want to cultivate, and that's what everyone is lacking. Everyone. People are successful financially in health. Like They're all not having enough fun. They want to have more fun. They care way too much about everything, and most people just have no passion, no light in their eyes. If they see a little bit of that from you, and this is the beauty too, the bar is so low, just get a little bit more, they'll flock to you because they want some of that to rub off on them. You know. 
and uh, that's literally what we do. We enter any type of venue. It's like joke around. Um, you were asking too, like what do you talk about? Like jokes. The best thing is like an inside joke you have either with your friends or if you're by yourself, with yourself. And by the way, this is a decision of how to live your life in general to enjoy your fucking life. What a lot of you do is you're in the stress state. Maybe study our videos to find some way out of that stress state. And then we give you this advice. So then you're like, when I get to that social environment, then I will try to lower my stress. But this is something that you want to be doing before, as a part of your life. In fact, even in success of women, I believe that 70% of success is around is bit, and I could change that number from at my own leisure, but 70% of success is actually what you're doing in between interactions more than in the interaction itself. Because if you and your buddy are having a great time just being there, then it's the easiest thing in the world is to turn and start talking to a girl. But if you're walking around in the stress state through the venue looking to take value, um, then when you eventually try to switch gears, it's like this really awkward switch. Yeah. I'd say it's not 70, it's 73%. Okay. Um, but, you know, but, but I agree with everything else. Uh, which, by the way, there's another topic you can just share with someone. Like, oh, it's 73. Hey, 73. She's like, what? There's your, your light thing to share. You know? And they're like, well, what, what are they so passionate about? What are they joking about? Why? Because every other conversation is boring. Every other conversation is so boring. And it's like, if you just have that little spark, it could be fucking anything. Like, you could even... You know, not to get too deep, but like you could joke about the news. Just like pull up an article and be like, oh my God, check this out. And be like, ah, never mind. Done. You know? And uh, it's true. In between interactions and outside of those environments, like your entire life, the self dialogue should be like, everything's fun, everything's carefree, I'm the shit, I'm so awesome, and everything you do is fucking awesome and fun. Whatever it is. And people bitch like, well, what about my logical day job at a computer? No, get that self-talk. Every time you type a word, be like, fuck yeah, type in that word. <laughs> like, that's the side of dialogue I have. Like, I everything I do when I'm brushing my teeth, I'm like, hell yeah. Like, the best brush and shit like that. It's like, I'm always thinking everything I do is amazing, fun, and the shit. And don't criticize yourself if you're not there yet, and then self-attack. Because a lot of this is mental strength that you build over time. For me, a, a huge one for me was like, I'm 38, I'm getting older, I'm getting balder. It's just, the end is near. So I don't wanna do what I saw a lot of the role models in my life do when I was a kid and waste decades of my life being unhappy. So a huge frame that I have is wealth is not just financial, wealth is also how much enjoyment you get second to second. So I can see a guy who's super rich, but if we're sitting on an airplane, he looks miserable, to me he's not really rich. Because he might have external riches, but what he doesn't have is a perspective or a beautiful state within himself that can make him enjoy what he has. And if you're somebody who's making money, you're like, well, I'll be happy when. I'll be happy when. I'll be, I'll be happy with the next million. I'll be happy with the next million. I'll be happy with the next million. Or partner or this or that or the other thing. You know, Then what are you training your neural pathways to do, if, if that's what you're saying to yourself? What are you training the neural pathways? I'll be happy when. So you always want to be training your neural pathways to be happy now and then take action. Be happy now, take action. Be happy now, take action. Do any of you guys feel almost like if you were to be happy now, you'd stop taking action and that the negativity motivates you? I think a lot of guys feel that way. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I felt that way in the past. Um, it's fine and I think it could work. I think that you can, I've accomplished a lot just being miserable and thinking I'll be happy when. Don't get me wrong, but it didn't make me happy either. Okay, and then, if, and then you can shift your paradigm and just do it in a different way. Because some people will be like, you'll never accomplish anything if you're unhappy. I'm like, eh, I don't know. <laughs> I accomplished a lot pretty unhappy, don't get me wrong. But at the same time, I feel like I accomplished even more being happy and pushing myself. So happiness should not breed complacency. Happiness should, breed a, should, should create a, jo uh, a joy of taking action. Hmm. On, a, on a technical side too, it's like, say you take that older person who's more accomplished financially, look at what they're lacking and hit them there. Everyone's lacking somewhere. Where the fuck are they lacking? Don't try to compete with what they already have. That's huge, by the way. You're like, feeding into their frame. It's like going to a beautiful woman if you're a, if you're a funny looking balding ginger, and then you're trying to compete on looks. You're like, I'm in the gym. I think I have a four pack now. Like you're not gonna win that one. Well, you're not gonna draw them in either. It's like, you want them to be interested. Like, oh my God, who, what does this person have? How can I get that? If uh, someone comes up to say, us, and this would happen a lot, and I'd tell people back in the day, it's like, hey, Julianne, success with women. You know, I'm really good, what's up? I'm like, I already have that. <laughs> yeah, we don't care. Yeah, we don't care. Yeah, guys are like, my game's got to be good to talk to them. We're like, we know too many yeah. game guys. Like, we don't need that. It's like, that's handled. It's like you have someone who's making a lot of money. Like, hey, look at my money. You can't beat them there. But if they're, say, not happy, 
hit him there. I'd be way more impressed by an accountant than a game guy. Yeah. If a guy was like, dude, I'm incredible at accounting, I'd be like, well, I really use help with that. But, but is, isn't there like a commonality that that person will resonate it's with? It's a commonality, but like, it's just you're feeding into a frame. It's like, if you're a 7 out of 10 public speaker, and I've been public speaking for 15 years, like, what are the odds that someone's going to catch up in public speaking to guys like us or in things like game to guys like us? Like, if I'm going to go to, say, you know, a big mic or a Tom from MySpace, and, I'm, and all that I want to talk about is, like, this year I got to 13 mil in revenue. This year I got to 40. They're like, what? like why, are you, why would you even admit to that? That's pathetic. Yeah. Why would you even admit that you're doing that shitty? That's pathetic. So you don't, don't compete in the air. Don't play the competition game. Play the collaboration game. And then just be you and bring out that natural fun. People flock to good emotions. You always want to come across that you've got that fairy dust. Say the word fairy dust. Fairy. Okay, what is the fairy dust, by the way? What is it? Molly. Molly is the fairy dust. <laughs> The real secret of RSD. <laughs> the real secret. <laughs> Transformation mastery. We're like, drink up. People are like, this was the best of that. We love each other. People have this kind of fiction in their mind that there's people out there that just get it and everything's easy for them. And the truth is, like, everybody struggles, but you want to come across as that person who you don't struggle. Like, it's like an oasis, right? Think about, um, think about like, two environments. One is, like, Afghanistan during the Afghanistan war. And the other is like this perfect island with attractive people everywhere, stacks of cash everywhere. You go to the bathroom, it has every toiletry that you could want. You go to the, to the kitchen, there's like every piece of beautiful fresh fruit and grass-fed steak. If you're not a grass-fed steak, there's a f bullshit falafel. And you, and you have like, you know, the beds are covered in plush pillows of perfect temperature. Everything's just easy and better. You want to be coming across like that, but in a human. You want, that, you want to actually feel like that, but in a human. So the way that you do that is not just by actually making your life better, but it's also about shifting your perspective. As your perspective shifts, people feel at ease around you. They're like, around him, I feel like everything's okay. You want to be one of those people where if somebody's really stressed out, when they get around you, they realize it was all stupid. You catch that? Yeah. If someone's, do you ever feel that way when you watch an RSD video by any chance? No. You're all stressed out. <laughs> You're all stressed <laughs> Get him. You're all stressed out, and then you watch your RC video, and you realize it was all stupid. Have you ever done that? Yeah. Okay. So that's the effect that it's intended to have. As a newbie, learning body language, you want to learn the basics, which is, okay, stand up fucking straight, square up towards the person, solid eye contact, don't waver, and talk in a break and report tonality, which I'm doing now. What's the difference? Trying four words like, oh, hey, what? Like you before, like oh, oh really? Da, da, da. That's you, get a mix of it, you know, depending on what you were doing. Then you're like, I don't want to work there. <laughs> I don't want <laughs> like it'd be the mix between the two. So you want to go through that first step where you're like, let's get on top of that to prove to yourself nothing bad happens because it's so outside of your comfort zone. You know, from as a guy starting out or girl starting out, get a feel for it. But then the level above that is that it's not necessarily having a certain body language like squaring up. It's whatever feels comfortable to you and fully assuming it. So good body language could literally be like this. Or like this. Or like this. Watch what he's saying, okay? So say that I say, okay, if you think about shoulders being up like that, is that tense or good body language? Okay, but it can't be fake, because watch. If I talk to you like this, or if I talk to you like this, does it really look any different? Yes. Does it act, like, do I actually look like I'm scared right now? Yes. To you, really? Yeah. Okay, got it. So that's how you take it. But to me, like, if I were to see this and someone's talking, based on their voice, their demeanor, and their energy, if I'm doing this or if I'm doing this, I see zero difference at all for me, okay? But I like that you have your own opinion. Um, so even if I'm like this and I'm talking, I'm like, say that I ran an entire seminar like this, I don't think it looks any fucking different. So what, now here, now watch this, okay? So most body language books or courses We'll teach it at one level, which is the physiology of it. But rather, if I'm, okay, follow this. If I am nervous, then body, bad body language draws attention yeah. to the fact that I'm nervous. It's a tell. Say the word tell. tell. Like in poker. Is that, is that a poker word? I don't remember. Yeah. Okay, it's a tell. So if I actually am nervous, and then I'm like sitting here, and I'm like talking like with a weird accent, like, you know, like weird voice, and I'm like that, okay, now it becomes a tell. But if, if I'm not actually nervous, Nothing can make me look nervous. If I'm not nervous, nothing can make me look nervous, in my personal view. Like, um, 
Now, conversely, if you are nervous, it's pretty hard not to look nervous because if you're nervous, like, is anyone here like really uncomfortable to come in front of a crowd? I'll just do this as an example. Well, that's a horribly stacked question. Here, pop up here. Eric, okay. Eric, ask Eric. Yeah, we'll do this guy because he put his hand up here. Okay, so just come up here. Damn it. Okay, so we'll bring you two guys up. Okay, so it's, um, it's, hard. it's one of those things where, okay, so if you look at his face right now. <laughs> okay, so he has... He has this thing. What, what city do you grow up in? Um, it's like a small town. Yeah, I already knew that. So now here's what it is. <laughs> okay, so here's why. Okay, here's how I do it. So the thing is this. In smaller cities, they do this. I, I saw this a lot in Hawaii, too. There, it, it's, it's a cute thing, but it's also kind of sad. Um, it's this ho-hum thing in small towns where it's, it's like that tall poppy gets cut thing. So he's actually, how old are you? I'm 22. 22. He's a younger guy, but he's been trained to keep a fake beta male persona. It's completely fucking fake, okay? Okay, whoa, okay, it's completely <laughs> fucking fake. So, so what's happening is he's twitching a bit, his eyes are over blinking, he's like, he's just- Lips a, trembling, yeah, yeah, hands in your yeah, pocket, yeah. just freaking the fuck mm. out, don't shit. Okay, but <laughs> what's funny like is, to. okay, now what's funny though is I can put my hands, like what we said before, I can put my hands in my pocket and it's not gonna look, now you put your hands in your pocket, Okay, so put them right in your pocket, deep in your pocket, okay? Yeah, so now, so if he- Don't touch it. Okay. <laughs> okay, even when he laughs, it's like, eh, I'm laughing, don't hit me. So, I'm, I'm closing, don't hit me while I laugh. So, so what you're seeing, okay, so what you're seeing is, okay, is he ticklish? I don't know, okay, so. <laughs> I am. Okay. <laughs> That's not Los Has, I'm ticklish too. So, what you have is, is he has a demeanor where, now if his hands are in his pockets, and he's nervous, it will draw attention to the fact that he's nervous. So we can switch him up a little bit, like we can kind of pull him out, like even when he, okay, his hands are st stiff. Okay, shake it out a little bit, okay? Shake it out a bit. Okay, you can too. Nice, you got it. You're like, what's, what am I doing here? So you, are you nervous? Oh, we'll get you later, bro. Okay, so, so what we have here is you're, you're nervous and it's, okay, so the whole hum thing is taught in small towns where if you were to act anything like me or Julian, they'll call that arrogant or obnoxious, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Disrespectful. It's disrespectful, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Mm. Now, the challenge is, okay, here's where it gets weird. So if we do anything to change him, for example, a lot of women would actually find it offensive. They're like, why are you trying to change him? He, he's good the way he Such is. Such a sweet boy. He's so sweet. <laughs> and to any woman who, I would, who would say that, my only question is, do you want to fuck him? And if you'll fuck him, if you'll fuck him right now, I will leave him alone. Better yet, do you have a friend that'll fuck him? Get a friend to fuck him, I'll leave him alone. Come out with us to a bar or club and find one girl in a month that will fuck him and I'll leave him alone. But if you can't find one human to fuck him, I got work to do. So, okay. Like, do you trust him as your corporate CEO? So if you don't, then I got work to do. Are you gonna hire him to run your company? Because if you're not, then I got fucking work to do and fuck off. Because people always get mad at me and Julian, like trying to help a guy like this, and they're like, he's great the way he is. No, when they're saying he's great the way he is, who are they trying to benefit? Themselves. Who the fuck are they trying to benefit? Themselves. Okay? Yeah, they're trying to benefit themselves because they're trying to keep the world the same so that they don't have to be inconvenienced, so they don't have to question themselves, so they don't have to keep up. They're just trying to keep him with a little fucking ho-hum, okay? <laughs> and someday, when he eventually becomes who he's meant to be and drops his fake persona, he still may have a bit of the ho-hum. Doesn't, it doesn't mean that you have to change that you came from a small town, be proud of that. But there's a version of this that's just way cooler. Even if it's not like LA Hollywood asshole persona, there's a version of this that is, that is fucking high status, but he's not there yet. And you've been trained on this. And everything from when you're younger has trained you and trained you and trained you on this. Where do you come from, by the way? Uh, I've been in Dallas for 18 years. 18 years, where do you come from before that? Uh, Taiwan. Taiwan. Now, in the East, what is the name of the philosophy they teach there that tells us to stay in our place? It starts with a C, what is it? Confucianism. Confucianism. What does Confucianism teach? Modesty and family values. Are those bad things? No. no, those are amazing. Those are amazing things. But they can be taken in a different way. And so a lot of our clients that come from India or Asia have a certain mannerism that when they get to LA, <laughs> oh my God, oh my God. Okay, so it's the same, okay, do you see in his face? Like he's like, 
Like this, there's a nervousness there, okay? Now look, I wanna be also clear about this. <laughs> it's very easy for me or Julian to come up here when everyone's like, Tyler, Tyler Julian, Julian Blanc, eh? Right, it's very, very easy for us to be relaxed in this environment, we're teaching. I wanna be very clear about that. If me and Julian were brought up in front of a seminar, it, it's very possible that we could look a lot like this. I wanna be clear about that. A lot of status is contextual and who has the advantage in an environment. Um, that being said, though, you, you know, regardless of that, we, we want to put that aside for a moment. You're here, and we want to teach you social skills. Right now, I know that if I bring you out with me in Hollywood, right at the door, the bouncer's probably not going to let you in. Okay? It's not. It's probably not going to. He's probably not going to let you in. And <laughs> like, and it's everything from like the way that you're dressed. Okay? Like. The funny thing is, really, really cool guys that are super high level could dress like this as a sarcasm in LA. Because in LA, we do a lot of reverse fashions. You know about this? Like, you dress as a dork. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? Like, like you dress as a dork. Because you're so hip that you dress as a dork. Because it's like peacocking, right? You dress as a dork, right? So even if we look at you with like the pants thing that you've got going on here, and then, what's that? Came from, work. Came from work. Okay, how do you normally dress though? Um, exactly work. like this is the answer. So, um, okay, but you got your tucked in shirt tucked and all this. In, yeah, and all that, to the yeah, top. and all that can be, can be cool, but like, that, like even down to the brand, like what, what brand of shirt is this? Oh, it's uh, Tommy. Okay, Tommy Hilfiger, like where I come from, that's a very like Macy's mid-level brand. Either go, either go to the top or go ironic. Do you guys follow that? Go to the top, either wear the most baller, if you're gonna wear a brand as a shirt, it better be fucking Gucci or fucking Louis, or you go the opposite direction and you get some shit from the fucking thrift, sh from the thrift shop that's hella funny and hella cool. Okay, you go one, you pick a direction and you go with it, but you don't kind of go in the middle. What is, what is a brand like, say a Tommy Hilfiger, what does that communicate? What are you saying about yourself? You're saying, I am in the center. Basically how you're dressed right now, do you know what you're saying? You're saying, I'm in the center, don't get mad at me, don't judge me, I'm just wearing a nice Tommy Hilfiger shirt tucked in with my little black leather shoes, I'm just a nice little guy, here's me with my backwards cap, it's kind of fun, okay, what's this, what is this? That's the hoodie that my grandfather made. Hey, what is it? It's my, well, it was a uh, hoodie that my family made. Well, okay, so, okay, so that I love because your family made it, okay, so that's amazing. But if that had just been some regular hoodie with like a graphic tee, again, what is that coming across, right? Now, this is a lot of shit that will piss people off. I'm not trying to tell you how to dress however the fuck you want. I can also go out and I can rock shit no matter how I'm dressed. Don't get me wrong here. But again, if me or Julian are dressing a certain way, like if I do the Tommy Hilfiger shirt tucked in, I'll go out and I'll fucking rock it, okay? I've rocked it in everything ever, okay? Like just the dumbest shit. I look like a fucking retard. I rock it. Don't get me wrong here, okay? But again, if you actually are shy, and then you do this, you're drawing attention onto it that this is your strategy. Do you see the difference? Yeah. So you don't, want to, you don't want to feed into it. You don't want to play into it by being at the center. You've got to ask yourself, am I playing at the center or at the edge? Where are you playing? And um, there's a, um, I want you to understand the nature of that type of thing. So if you look at say the news or anything mainstream, have you ever noticed they tell these very low level jokes and then the other newscasters laugh at it? They're like, they're like it's a little cold out there, Gene. Might need to wear a double sweater. And they're like, oh, 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 oh. G Willikers. So what is that when they do that? When they do the G Willikers, what is that? I want to be clear here. There, it's actually a language. It's saying we are at the center. We are not rocking the boat. We will laugh at things that are not funny and we will make that into our humor. It's called family friendly humor. And we do that because we have chosen to live a life at the center. Now that's fine, but and, and I'm not, I don't have a problem with that. Okay, let's be clear about that. I don't have a problem with that. You should do what you wanna do. I would just say be educated on what you're doing and then make a decision based on information. Okay, make an educated decision. So if you choose to do this, and then you choose to get the most generic job, get a generic wife, and live a generic life, I'm okay with that as long as you know what you're doing. But if you don't know what you're doing, <laughs> Right? If you don't know and you're like, I thought this was Pam, then, that, then, then that's a problem. So know, know what you're doing, okay? Know make a decision just to understand it and then go from there. It's not like you have to do this, you have to do that. Clothes to me, like at me or Julian's level, the clothes is probably the least important thing ever. 
but at the same time, just be aware of what is communicating. And if you're at a lower level, be aware of like what you're doing, right? Like things like, like when you choose to wear, like, like I love Kobe Bryant, but if I go wearing the Kobe Bryant jersey and I have another man's name on my back, what am I really saying? Beta, what am I really saying, guys? Come on. Beta. What's that? I mean, what's it say, right? Now, I can, now, again, at a certain level, you do it as a joke. Like, I would wear a Kobe jersey. I'd be like, Kobe, right? But it's a joke. It's like, okay, what is photobombing? What does photobombing say about you? It has a beta male implication, but at the same time, Le I've seen LeBron James do photobombing. Now, when LeBron does photobombing, what is that? It's him saying, like, I can be a beta male too, right? Like, it's, a, it's the fact that LeBron does photobomb, it's like the super cool guy that dresses like a nerd. It's, it's like, it's acting beta to actually highlight how absurd it is. Like when you see LeBron behind some random guy, like, ah, like I'm in the shot, like he thinks it's such a big deal that he's in the shot. It reminds you how much not a big deal it is and makes him look even cooler. You guys catch that? Yeah. Now, okay, anything that I'm, anytime that you have somebody defining to you what's cool and what's not, you should question it. I'm not up here just like, oh, I'm telling you what's cool. Don't worry about what me or Juliet are gonna say today. Worry more about, like, take what we're saying more as like a thought experiment and just as getting you thinking about it and figuring out what's cool to you. Trying to live to the standard, like, like if you honestly decide, like, listen, motherfucker, I'm wearing this fucking tucked in shirt and you can suck my fucking dick. And then you fucking go rock it, dude. You're fucking hella funny, hella cool. Then you, then you will literally shove it in my ass and blow a load in my fucking ass. And you will dominate me, okay? And you can do that. You can do that. And I believe in you to do it. Not now, but I believe you could eventually do it. So, so understand, like, no, don't let, ever let anyone tell you what's cool or not cool, but just be aware of what you're communicating and then just make an educated decision in what it is that you're doing. Understand that, okay? Also understand that what's cool in LA could be different than what's cool in a different city. Yeah. A lot of shit me and Julian would do is like very hard to interpret when we come from Hollywood, because most Hollywood style is like an irony of an irony of an irony of an irony. Like, do you guys follow this? Yeah. Like it's literally like, like 13 steps removed style. It's, it, it just doesn't make, it's like a rapper combined with a hipster, combined with a rich guy, combined with like, the, like, combined with like some guy from the 70s then combined with something new. And it's like combined in one fucking thing and that's LA style for you. It's like the most hard to decipher thing you've ever fucking seen. And yet when you live there, it's just fun. It's actually just kind of fun. But when you don't live there, it's just really confusing and you don't know why you can't get in the club and you wonder why you have to go to the shittiest clubs. And then you heard there's all these hot girls in LA and you, can't, you haven't seen any of them because they're at the club we're at and you're in some bullshit general audience club and you're never getting in. Now, what you have from here, <laughs> I'm just being an asshole. So, okay, don't worry, you guys are totally getting in. So. <laughs> So, um, so, okay, so, so what you have is, um, like in LA, for example, like if you're in the best clubs, most guys in there are just wearing shitty hoodies. But, that's, but the idea of it is like, it's so hard to get in that when you're wearing shitty clothes and get in, then it looks even cooler. But, but yet maybe a fancy club here might want a suit. And if you're wearing a shitty hoodie, you look low status. So it can mean a different thing in each environment. I, I don't care about this. I, I've gone way too long on this clothes thing. I don't give a fuck about it. I guess, but I just like what it represents about status and social dynamics in general. And I like how that, those same concepts reflect in personality. So we can actually translate clothing style into personality style. All right? Now, women do have that same thing, by the way. They can do, um, you know girls that have like a great body, they can dress a bit like a dude. You ever seen that? Because she's so hot, she dresses like a guy. But I only recommend that to a girl that is that hot. If a girl's not that hot, I'd recommend glam it up and make it feminine, right? So it depends where you're at and what you're trying to do. Your style here, like, say you take the cool version of you, like the Asian dude who's like really like tucked in and shit, like, it'd be the guy who has the shit like trimmed out, probably has like the little straps on and just like really owning it you could pull it off. The same with you. If you're like, what's up, man? I smoke weed every day. It's just fucking, yeah, it's like, you know, you'd be the shit. But there's like that incongruency where you're like dressed as the guy who doesn't give a fuck, but you're like, hey. What's up? Like, that was the best thing you did in 50 years. It's like, all right. That's the best moment ever. Like, that's literally how I hear it. It's like, I don't know. Like, smoke, grandpa shirt. You know? Um, so it's like, it's like, what the fuck? Now this is the you worst know? too, because he comes up, I'm like, what's this shirt? He's like, it's my family. I'm like, oh, fuck. I'm like, oh my God, I've seen it all. <laughs> family legacy, you know? Yeah, it's know. Like, like destroy his whole legacy. <laughs> like, what's this shit here? No, it's, honestly, it's the coolest thing is a sweater. And it, um, oh, thank you. No, it, it brought it to your <laughs> We're going to hell. Uh, <laughs> no, but the thing is like, You're there's, <laughs> there's, there's the incongruency. So it's like yeah. fully own it. Like whatever you wear, fully fucking own it. So for you, if you're gonna tuck it in, like belt it up like that, you're like, like own that shit. Like I'm the motherfucking gangster Asian boy, you know, versus 
I work in an office. Yeah, you got to be like, like, what do you do for work? Uh, looking at like a, Come on, bro, Odin. I guess call, like a call center. So I take uh, calls for retirement calls. All right, so like you've got to be at a point where it's like, like, I was going to say someone to own that, but I don't know how. <laughs> Why say just for you? I right now, like, way. untuck it. Okay. Untuck, untuck it. it. Yes. You're like, untuck it? Yes. <laughs> untuck it. See, like, what I would almost Unbutton. do, I swear to God, like, this, you could do this. Let's try this. Unbutton. Uh, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Open? Oh, and the t-shirt. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. All right. Heads up, by the way. I mean... Unless you're gonna leave it fully open. Okay, let's ask the women in here, okay? No t-shirts under the collared shirt. Wait, you see the guy who has the tight up white shirt underneath the dress shirt? What does that communicate to you? Home Depot worker. <laughs> what does it communicate to you? To be honest, I kind of like Home Depot guys. Well, so, then uh, Home Depot. Here you go. <laughs> you're the one fucking up! Yeah! But you know, you know what, you know what's funny though? Is like Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be a bit of a hassle here. The challenge is like, cause you're being so positive and encouraging and I love that, but cause I love always being positive and encouraging. But the problem is I actually don't think you date guys from Home Depot. And the problem, okay, you don't. And the problem is, so a lot of that like fun stuff in the mainstream, cause in the mainstream, all the cool people are really positive. And then me as the chode, I'd see some beautiful girl like you and I'd be like, really? And like, I would think you're serious. And I'm like, I work at Home Depot. Is it, is it on? You know, and you're like, I, 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 and you just run away. So that, so a lot of that, like, um, like, what kind of guys have you dated in your life? Um, they're mostly like the asshole type. Okay, that's sweet. So, <laughs> sociopath. Your personality and your personality is hiding at the center. So is he focused on dominating and winning or are they focused on not having a problem socially? Not, not getting blowback, problem. not having people judge them, not being seen, not being expressive and just general beta maleness. Do you see this? Yeah. So, and that's been conditioned into them. It's social conditioning. I don't think it's who they are. <laughs> I don't think anybody would be in this room if they felt that that was who they are. I think there is some people that's who they are. I don't think they'd be in this room if that was who they are. Do you guys both agree with that? Yeah, I agree, yeah, I agree with that. Okay, and by the way, when he said, yeah, I agree with that, that was the first time I heard him sound normal. Did you guys catch that? Yeah. I'll tell you guys another quick weird story that I, that I did the other day. Okay, I'm gonna try it on them, but it probably won't work, but I, I did it on another guy, I'm gonna tell the story, okay? Oh, wait, I gotta recenter myself here. Okay, <laughs> this is so weird. All right. <sighs> I'm gonna, okay, I'm gonna be real with you. I look at both you guys and ask myself a question. Like, every day that I wake up, I wake up, okay, now this is an experiment here, okay? It's just a thought experiment. Every day that I wake up, I feel kind of fucking mad. I feel mad that I'm not making more money. I feel mad that other people could be getting money away from me and I'm not fucking winning. I feel mad that I'm not making so much fucking money that I'm fucking dominating and giving it to all my friends and family so they could have a great time. I get mad I'm not fucking every hot girl on the fucking planet. I get mad that there's girls out there that are getting fucked by some other fucking dude and it's not me and it fucking makes me pissed off. I get mad that I'm not operating at my best fucking level. I get mad that I'm not dominating the entire fucking planet. And I just want to step up and I feel a fire inside myself that I want to step up. I just feel mad, okay? And I want to step up. I don't want to win, Woo! okay? Do you ever feel that way? No. Wait, do you ever feel that way? Okay, so it's funny, so, so that, so, so I'll tell you the story. I tried it as an experiment this past weekend in San Fran and I had a very different reaction. I had this student who makes the persona that you got, the fake persona that you guys have, this fake beta mill thing you guys are doing. I had a student that did this relentlessly for three days, okay? The whole, he, and he, he was like, he was like, uh-huh, uh-huh, right? I'm like, what do you think of this? He's like, it's very nice, it's very nice. I'm like, what the fuck? Who did this to you, bro? Right? And, and he's like, yes, yes. He's going, he's going out, he's like, hi, 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 hi. And I'm like, oh my God. And I couldn't, and finally on the final day of the boot camp, I, I just gave that same speech. I was like, don't you feel mad? And it was like days of trying to get him out of his shell. And, he, and, and he, all weekend again, he's like, yes, yes, eh. like all the stuff that you're doing, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay, he looked look normal there. So like I challenged him, he looked normal, that's interesting. So, and, and after a whole weekend of like, all of us on the program just watching this guy, like, yes, yes, okay, eh. Like just fucking like Dilbert, like I'm just losing my mind. <laughs> I say that, I'm like, don't you just want to dominate? And, he, and I swear to God, he looks up at me and he's like, I, I was like, do you ever feel like that? He looks up at me and he's like, you know, Owen? Yeah, I'm, I do. <laughs> and uh, I feel like I kind of lost touch with that, but yeah, there is a part of me that feels like that. And uh, thanks, man, you make a good point. Thanks a lot of And me and Maze were like, ah, 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 like 
were freaking because it was like like three days of like, hey, 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 hey. And we're like, why can't we fix you? Please let us fix you. And then like he just, and, and, he, and it wasn't the persona or high status. He just sounded fucking normal. Like he just sounded like, like that's what he's meant to sound like. But it took me saying this like really psycho, like over the top Genghis Khan rhetoric to get him to connect with that, something extreme. Could I steal your hat for the rest of the seminar? You could. Okay, thank you. So I'm gonna do this for the rest of the seminar too. Okay. <laughs> Okay, sweet. So, I'm gonna, okay, not bald anymore. <laughs> I'm moving up. All right, so, it's I have a large head. Well, that's exactly what it is. Okay, so, all right. Like that? Cool? You guys like it? Yeah. Sweet, thank you, bro. Okay, so, okay. <laughs> I'm the fucking shit now. Look at this. To the crowd, how's it going? Well, good. it's going good. Well, no, it's like ask oh, him how's oh, it going. Oh, I gotta ask them. Say, hey, how's it going? Okay, hey guys, how's it going? Cool. You do it now too. Oh, hey guys, how's it going? Okay, cool. All right. So, think of it like this, okay? As I mentioned before, there's trying for a poor tonality where your voice goes up, like, "Hey guys, how's it going?" You know, like, "Hey." Uh, um, now, <laughs> sometimes here it's like your tonality was actually pretty good. Same with you. It was not like fully like, "Hey, how's it going?" But you compensated with trying for a poor body language and little smiles. So it's not like, "Hey, how's it going?" It's, "Hey, how's it going?" Like that. Okay, so. That's what most people do when they supplicate. Then there's the neutral one, it's like, hey, how's it going? Like a robot, and then it's, hey, how's it going? Where it goes down. Now, Up, upward inflection, neutral inflection, yep. down sloping inflection. TR, NR, BR, trying for rapport, neutral rapport, breaking rapport. And breaking rapport, like people misinterpret that they think it's like forcefully going down, like, hey, how's it going? Like all the time. <laughs> no, it's, it's how you naturally talk. Like when you're with, your close friends or family, uh, the way you just like feel at ease, like you're not gonna be like, so hey buddy, you like the Thor? Do you watch Thor last week? You're not gonna do that. And you're not gonna be like a fucking robot either with your close friend, like, did you watch Thor? It's, hey, so do you watch Thor? It's still a smile, but it's normal. You know you're the shit, you know you have good intentions. If you knew that, you wouldn't half-ass it. You wouldn't compensate for it or just like play it safe. You'd be like, well, of course they wanna hear me. Try to say like, mad say, fuck this shit. Fuck this shit. Good, good. Fuck this shit. Yeah. Again. Yeah. Fuck this shit. Okay, that was better. You see his first one, he's like, fuck this shit. Don't hurt me. <laughs> Don't hurt me. Do you see the conditioning that's gone in? This is conditioned. This is not who they are as people. If I thought this was authentically who you are, you would not hear a peep out of me. But because you're fucking lying is why I'm being a bit of an asshole. You are fucking lying. It's a lie. It's a fucking lie. And by the way, this isn't to help other people. This is selfish. Dimming your light is utterly fucking selfish. It's all about you and you hiding and you not showing your greatness. And that's fucking bullshit. I have no tolerance for that. I'm not okay with that, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay? So I don't tolerate this. No tolerance for this shit. And you shouldn't either, man. You, I mean, it's your light. I'm, if I'm this pissed about the dimming of your light, I might be more pissed about it than you are. And that's not okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, it's not okay. It's not okay, okay? It's not okay. Julian, tell him. It's okay, it's fine. You're not uh, okay. <laughs> no, it's not fucking okay, but. Hey, tell him this. Tell him it's not okay. It's not okay. Not okay. Do, you, do you guys want to see the real them? Yes. Yeah, so whip it out. Okay. So, okay. <laughs> I do want to mention, too, it's like anyone outside of this room who doesn't know about social conditioning would see that. It's like they're teaching them to be fake. It's like, no, this is being fake. It's not faking it till you make it. It's what I say. It's like acting real until you remember. And it's like, look at yourself in an environment where you feel fully comfortable. You know, it's like every guy, girl, has that environment where you feel at ease. Whether it's with your close friends. If you have no friends, it might be your family. If you can't even talk to your family, I always joke. <laughs> you're like, <laughs> there's always the video game. You guys ever hear that? Like the video game, like massive nerds with like the headsets. No friends, no family, no one to talk to in real life, but on that headset, holy shit, are they cocky and loud and joking around and spitting shit and jokes? Like, that's where they come alive. I doubt on the headset, you're like this, I hope. Like, when you're playing that game, you're like, motherfucker, you're like, oh, hey, mo no, it's like, no. Yeah. I yeah, want to so see, I want, to see the, I, want, I want the whole seminar done in that voice of me. <laughs> the little show Yeah, it's amazing. Like, that's all I ever want you to talk like from now on. <laughs>
<laughs> and I'm not dead, I do not accept that. <laughs> well, here's another one. It's like, linking to what we said before, you could come hand in the pocket where you're like shy, like, huh? or like, hey, how's it going? You know, the same with that voice. If I take on that voice, it comes off as funny, because once more, it's like, I'm mocking it. I can get away with it versus someone who's like it's really LeBron speaking like that. Yeah. The place it's coming from. Yeah, same thing. It's like, that's how you should rock. Be like, fuck yeah. Mm -hmm. I can do this, and it's gonna be hilarious, okay? <laughs> but it's got, but it, but it depends where you're coming from. That's why I don't worry about the style. I just want you to understand what it communicates. I want you to understand, like, like if it really looks like that, or if it looks like an ironic version, okay? So, you guys have been just beaten down by social conditioning, <laughs> and it's sad, man. Um, I understand. I've been there myself. That's why it, it hurts my heart when I see it. You know, it hurts my heart, man. And I love you guys, you know, and you're good people. And you've just been fucking bullshitted into this nonsense, you know? And, you know, if you learn, maybe you could have media fiascos. I mean, if you learn, <laughs> we learn from me and Julian. Um, <laughs> such good role models, right? Just right? show you the way, man. You can you be could on be CNN. Like, <laughs> like us. Um, <laughs> look, aside from that, what we have, okay, forget about that for a minute. What we have here is... Basically, and you look, you're looking cooler, okay, as you're getting up here. Walk the crowd for a minute. Just give me a quick walk of the crowd. It's okay, All right. okay? All right, okay. 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 All right. Now, by the way, as a teaching technique, can you guys get what I'm giving them a hard time or what I gave him a hard time? What is the teaching technique that I'm using on them, by the way? What I'm doing is giving negative reinforcement for the beta and we want to give positive reinforcement for alpha. Do you guys see that? Yeah. So right now what they're getting is they're getting bullshit positive feedback on the beta stuff. So we're trying to unwire that, okay? So that's why we're doing a bit of the asshole thing. Now I want you to be, so I want you to start to anchor hiding as not a good thing and as being free and authentic as a good thing, okay? okay. Now let's look again, okay, so let's look at the three vocal tonalities. And no, remember we said earlier, you could understand the technique, but you've also got to understand why it sounds like that. So let's be clear about this. So, hey guys, how's it going? Hey guys, how's it going? Hey guys, how's it going? Now, with the downward inflection, we want to combine that with positivity. So say that we go, hey, how's it going? Hey, how's it going? Show me the first one, the new, like, like, show me a robot one. Hey, how's it going? Hey, how's it going? Okay, now show me like the kind of like flamboyant gay guy one. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> that, that, that's funny. Yeah. His real self came out. We're done. <laughs> You don't need to fuck him anymore. Congruent. So, okay, so, and now, and now he's laughing kind of like, yeah, like that, I love that. But now he's hiding again. So, so now we, okay, so now, okay, so, hey, how's it going? Do that, hey, how's it going? Hey, how's it going? Hey, how's it going? You do it too, Julian. Hey, how's it going? Then, hey, how's it going? Hey, how's it going? You do it too. Hey, how's it going? Okay, so, Look at neutral versus positive. Those are two different things. Okay, so we want to generally go positive. People are attracted like moths to a flame to positivity. Then we go, and, and expressiveness. Then we go though, let's combine that with the TR, NR, BR. So, hey, how's it going? Hey, how's it going? Hey, how's it going? And be, I, what's funny is I tend to, um, when I try to show this, I don't do as well on the BR one uh, because I get flustered myself, probably because I am such a natural beta male growing up. Um, but could you show them as well? I do okay showing it. I'd like you to show it. Yeah, would be like, hey, how's it going? Hey, how's it going? Hey, how's it going? You guys catching that? He's a bit better at it than me. So, okay, so what? now, okay. <laughs> and now can we do it in the frog voice? <laughs> Come on! Frog voice, frog voice, frog voice, frog voice. That's what it's gonna be, that's what it's gonna be known as, like the frog uh, voice. He's French. Hi. <laughs> um, so would be like, Hey, how's it going? <laughs> <laughs> okay, can you get an RBR? It's not, it's not possible, my voice. Hey, how's it going? Okay. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> <laughs> but that's like the cookie. No. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> <laughs> that's the best thing I ever saw in my life. And then, can you do it at, with a French accent? Yeah. Okay. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> hey, how's it going? <laughs> hey, how's it going? <laughs> Oh, thank you, thank you. Oh my God, wow. Okay, so we just found the million dollar gimmick. Um, 
and the next CNN apology has got to be in the fucking Frank Kermit. Like, I'm so like, sorry. I, you're not. <laughs> I didn't oh. know. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh I, I would God. do a mix of the French and Australian. Yeah. And, be- <laughs> oh and by the way, you guys are wondering, remember we said earlier when you're carefree, you just talk about any bullshit. This would be the kind of bullshit we'd be doing for hours. And you see how natural it is for us to kind of loop on this? And this would go for oh, hours. Yeah. And then we'd get other people doing it and et cetera, et cetera. So- I've done entire nights out, by the way, with this French accent. <laughs> like massive French to the point where it's just so obnoxious. I'd walk by like, oh, do I smell cheese? Is that cheese here? And then the girl's like, what the fuck? Like that. Yeah, I'd be like, it'd be good. I guess it's also a bit of a funny one because I think the guys should go out learning how to communicate in a, in a more normal, logical way first. Because I find that if guys are new to going out and socializing, that they can be, they're trying too hard to be funny. It becomes a thing where they're not good enough unless they're funny. So I think the first level of learning is learning how to talk to everybody in a more normal, within your comfort zone way, and then you build on it. Do you guys see that? That's actually how I like to teach it. I don't want you, you don't have to like force, 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 force. You can kind of learn it in steps. Do you guys see that? You can learn it in steps. Now, let's get you doing uh, TR and RBR. So, Hey, how's it going? Do that with me. Hey, how's, how's it, it going? You do it. Hey, how's it going? Okay. Hey, how's it going? Hey, how's it going? Hey, how's it going? And then, hey, how's it going? Hey, how's it going? Hey, how's it going? Okay, so now, do you guys sort of sense a little bit of different energy coming with each one? Yeah. yeah. And it's not quite perfect. And it's, it's interesting because I don't want you to like continually just fake, 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 fake all the time either. So don't get me wrong. Um, so this has to be kind of implemented with a degree of critical thinking, because uh, I don't want you just walking around like, just like hey, 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 yeah. no, no, no. <laughs> well, actually, great example too of like coming from that tryhard place. Like you hear breaking rapport, and then you see the guy super. He's just like, hey, nice seminar, man. Like so forced. Like how's it going? And then that's like too stifled, too stiff. Done. Yeah. Now, and and then that said also, but if you need to act like that for a minute to try it. I'd rather that you do that than not at all. Hey, how are you doing? Give that to me. Hey, <coughs> how are y'all doing? Okay, you do it now. Hey, how are y'all doing? Okay, now, Julie, do you want to work with him for a second here? Get him to try some different stuff. I would say let it ring for a longer period of time. So instead of like, hey, how are y'all doing? It's like, hey, how are you all doing? Like, over pronounce it instead of like cutting it short, let it sit. Like, how's it going? Versus, how's it going? So, hey, how's it going? Hey, how's it going? Even more like, going. Hey, how's it going? Now put your body into it. That's something that's huge too. It's like, although, yeah, you can do it if you're like, hey, how's it going? Like that, it's a lot easier to put your body into it. You know, like I kid you not, people sometimes like mock my videos. I'm like, this is Julian, like that. <laughs> um, the, the reason being, by the way, kid you not, is um, it helps me pronounce different things. Like that's why I'd go out and just, on one hand, be captivating because Say I'm talking to someone and you're like looking away, I'm like, you're gonna like look at this hand. So I'm like, put, 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 the entire time. And uh, it helps me accentuate shit. So instead of being like, hey, how's it going? Hey, how's it going? The going, it accentuates. So put your fucking body into it. Like, how's it going? How's it, how's going? it going? How's it going? How's it going? How is it going? How is it going? <laughs> Better be good. I'm looking at you. Got those arms crossed. Uncross him, <laughs> whip it out, stroke, oh. stroke, stroke. It's not weird because there's two girls in the room. It's not weird at all. They make it not weird. <laughs> They're like, what the fuck? Dude? But, okay, but do it like same for you. Body into it and then do it a few times in a row. Because the first time you're always gonna be like stifled. They're like, how's it going? 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 <laughs> okay, now, understanding it's step one. Number two is exaggerating it to the point where it's like you're delivering Shakespeare on stage. So I want it to be like a fucking caricature of the most broken or poor person ever. The reason being is like you've adjusted your internals to this. So in your mind, when you're like, hey, how's it going? Um, it sounds fucking crazy. You're like, this is so fake, so out there. It's like someone who's really quiet. You think that hey, how's it going, is like normal, because you've adjusted yourself to that. Let's think the most out there character, so instead of like, hey, how's it going, it's like, I'm gonna be like, hey, how's it going? Like, hey, how's it going? How's it going? Like, in your mind, it should sound like that. Like, how's it fucking going? <laughs> Go. Hey, how's it fucking going? Funny enough, as, as, like, as like cartoonish as that is, I'm more captivated by that than what I previously saw, funny enough. What about you? Hey, how's it going? The fucking going. 
How's it fucking going? Flare your nostrils as you do it, like, fucking go. How's it fucking going? And by the way, he's doing well, but what he's doing as a defense is right on the tail end. He's going beta, so you won't hurt him. Are you, are you guys catching that? He's actually, do he's, he's dominating, right? He's, he's owning it, but right up to the end, he's going, I'll do what you guys say, but none of you hurt me. Please, don't hurt me. It's all fear-based, all this shit, by the way. Instead of how's it going, because to pull this one off, you really got to own it, you're going to tell the crowd, daddy's home. <laughs> now, you can't just be like, daddy's home. It's daddy's home. Daddy's home. Like, I want the nostril flares, I want the growl, I want daddy's fucking daddy's home. home. No, daddy's fucking home. Daddy's fucking home. I love this shit, I can't stop. Hey, daddy's <laughs> fucking home. <laughs> and I always think, like, you're this old fucking dude, kind of frustrated, growly guy, just like, daddy's fucking home. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I want to see. Daddy's fucking home, motherfucker. Daddy's home, baby. <laughs> Negative reinforcement on the beta, positive reinforcement on the alpha. Okay, we're gonna help him here. Okay, show it now. You can, yeah. now you gotta follow up with him. That's tough. I wouldn't want to even follow that up. I don't even want to follow that. Like I'm like, I'm like, dad, he's not as good as him. But give it a try. Hey, look, he's getting all cocky. He's getting hard. Yeah. <laughs> Daddy's fucking home. Daddy's fucking home. Yeah, but see, but but he was so pimp with it that it's too hard to follow up. Right, so maybe pick a new one then. Well, no, no, I'll, I'll give it to you so you get my tonality. Okay. So think. Flare the nostrils a bit, get in character, be like <clears throat> I wanna growl, I wanna <laughs> I wanna hear it like look at the feel like <clears throat> You're a bull, man, a fucking fat bull. <laughs> fucking nostrils flaring, say I'm a fat bull, motherfucker. <laughs> I'm a fat bull, motherfucker. <laughs> Boom, there! <laughs> Now, now, don't go back to that. You're the fat fucking bull. You're like, I'm the flip. <laughs> no. Say, I'm a fat bull with a big fat dick. I'm a fat bull with a big No, not, no, no. Big fat dick. <laughs> Put your body into it, man. Oh Once more. I'm a fat bull with a big fat dick. <laughs> yeah. All right. Good, but you laughed at the end to break the tension. Hold it. So it's like, I'm a big fat bull with this fucking throbbing dick. And you own it. No laughing. Just go. I'm a big fat bull with a big throbbing dick. Yeah. I didn't even know if I could even do that. I'm a big fat bull. Check out my bull dick. Check out my bull dick. Like I get it. Sure, get me to do. It. I want to learn this one. I'm just mad now. Okay, okay, show me. Get me to it. Flare in the nostrils. Okay. So let's start. Like, get the bull nostrils okay. going. You're like, <laughs> like, feel the dick. Feel the dick. My <laughs> God, I'm baited. I can't do it. I need to go to your town now. Okay. <laughs> Okay, keep teaching me. Yeah. <laughs> do you feel the dick, boy? <laughs> do you feel the dick? I can't do it. Feel the dick, boy? <laughs> Fucking A, huh? Look at that. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> you about to shit your pants? <laughs> you about to shit your pants? Shit your pants, little girl? <laughs> Oh my god. What about you? Into a pit. <laughs> I know, I see. It's like, he's like, fuck you. Yeah. What about you? So you Here, switch pants. places, switch places. Now you're in his identity, right. so they'll help you. Okay. Say. Yeah, look, see, as soon as you put him in his identity, he became alpha. So let's do it with you. You like nunchucks? <laughs> you like nunchucks? No, no, oh, like, I want that tension. So notice how I really. Like, this is hard, bro. Like, I can't even do this. Like, so. even the tonality, it's like, you. <sighs> you're, <fucking No>. <laughs> <laughs> you're a growly old man. Miserable. All you have is your fucking whiskey in your cabin. Lost in the woods, no one around. <laughs> <sighs> Nunchucks, motherfucker. Nunchucks, motherfucker. Better. Now let's look at them and let's add some more raw power. Nunchucks, motherfucker. Yeah! Yeah! Now, now let's do it even louder. Be like, like them nunchucks, girl. 
<laughs> like the nunchuck girl. Yeah! yeah! Fuck yeah. yeah! Good. Now, let's go back to normal. How's it going? How's it going? A little, uh, a little bit more of the, the old growly man. How's it going? Good, now let it ring longer. How's it going? How's it going? How's it going? Now even louder, like again, you want to, here, here's another subtlety by the way, you can be loud yelling at or drawing in. The difference, how's it going? That's yelling how's it going? versus how's it going? How's it going? It's more of like a loud draw in where you kind of talk down versus at. So think you want to just make it, you know, resonate in your fucking testicles, so it just goes out. How's it going? Even like, how's it going? 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 You gotta try. I know you want to. How's it going? And once more, it's like think Shakespeare, like you're over the top, like you're fucking preaching. Imagine this is the last word you'll ever say, and you die after this. How's it going? Make it like. You're fucking on stage, you're like, how's it? Like God's coming down, it's, you're gonna die. This is it, your last word alive. The last time you'll ever speak. How's it going? How's it going? Boom, yeah. fucking yeah. Yeah. Do you, do you, do you have this look like you're coming out of a trance. How do you feel right now? Fucking like weird. I know, you, were, <laughs> you see that? You literally seem surprised like, holy shit. How do you feel, describe it. Like honestly, like, I, I don't know. I don't yeah. know. I, like it's, it's different. Like I, I, this isn't my normal self. Like yeah. I don't feel like me. How do you feel? Fucking awesome. <laughs> yeah. So it doesn't feel like him and it feels awesome. Oh no. <laughs> All right. Now your turn, come up here in the center. This is it, man. You're about to die. Life's ending right now. You have one last time to just make an impact. Put it out there. Yeah. Now, now let's do one more, even louder, and let it last longer. Put your full body into it. Like you can even fall to your fucking knees. Whatever. You're gonna die, dude. This is it. Right. How's it going? Yeah. Fuck yeah. Hell yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the best thing I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> <laughs> You're just like. <sighs> Take it in. Feel the nunchucks. Don't laugh. Don't, don't, don't break it. Again, a big part of it, too, is like holding tension. Like yeah, he's the worst, by the way. He's the fucking worst. Like, you know, most of you guys will go make jokes and you're out, and you'll be like, blah, 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 and you'll be like, eh, just kidding. Like, this guy will go. He will hold it for out. Like, it's never done. Like, even, like, if he gets in a relationship with a woman, it's not done. <laughs> like, it's like months in. He's like, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, whoa, dude. Jeez. <laughs> He doesn't, you, you have a philosophy about not letting off the tension, right? No, I love keeping that tension. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's, um. Luke's like this too, by the way, but in a different kind of way. <laughs> it's like, Luke does it with clowning, right? Like, Luke will take the joke, like, it's like some public spectacle, and I'm like, ah, I'm like, okay, okay. And Luke's like, no, no, no. And he'll just keep going and keep going. I'm like, dude, please. I'm like, I'm freaking out. He's like, ha, ah, ah, ha, ah. ha. And he'll just keep going. <laughs> but uh, you're like that more with like, like, just like socializing in general. Like, you'll do that when you're out chatting with people. Well, it does a few things. It's like, on one hand, it spices the interaction up like that. Whether you're talking to a girl or a guy, it's like if you hold the tension a little longer, immediately it's like fucking interesting and it just tingles their emotions. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, what does it communicate? That you are so grounded into yourself and so secure that you're able to hold the tension. Because the first thing that every beta show does breaks it. Whether it's trying for a poor, whether it's saying a joke and be like, ha ha, whether it's like ha, ha, looking away, trembling, whatever the fuck it is, like everyone's freaking out all the time. If you're just like, hey. Just keep it a little, like even Newt. Notice how you can even handle the, hey, you were like, looking to the side. Yeah, when you, when you go out with this guy, honestly, the, the guy who you, who you remind me the most of is uh, Mystery um, from back in the day, where if you watch Mystery out, you just can't, like, you're trying to do what you're doing, but you can't help but watch Mystery. Way back in the day when I'd be learning from him, it was like the most incredible thing. And Julian has that same quality. Like when you're out and you see Julian chatting with people, it's hard not to watch. Like most of our videos together, it's like, you'd think we'd be like totally like winning together, but most of it's just like me giggling like a little girl while I watch him. Like, cause I'm, I'm, I'm like, oh, I'm like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. 
Like it's a lot of that. He, it's hard not to watch because he thrives off of like social energy. Julie, like you have a, what, what is it about that why you like social energy and playing and, and messing around? Because you have a deep passion for that. It's obvious. It's like your main hobby almost or is. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean it's uh, I just like shaking things up and like it, it's always underlying is like fun, fun, fun at adult time. So it's not like I'm going to like nunchucks and like there's that anger like nunchucks bitch. like no it's always fun but I like keeping it a little longer because it, it just spices shit up immediately like everything's so bland and boring it's again it's like either trying for rapport or neutral no one goes low and just holds it you know and that's also even when you're talking to say a girl will cause a lot of like sexual tension people are like I'm always in the friend zone like just do this like try taking a one second break after every sentence Instead of just going and be like, so hey, how's it going? Pause. Fucking hold it. Or do a five second break. Middle of a sentence. He's at the cause, not the effect. You guys catch that? Yeah. That's a critical distinction right there. That's probably one of the biggest distinctions you are all lacking. Because we all do, to be honest with you. Right? He's at the cause, not the effect. You guys say that word, cause, not the effect. Cause. Okay? So his emotions are stabilized within himself. And so because he's affecting it, it's clear that he's not looking for validation or approval. And what happens when it's clear in life that you're not looking for validation or approval? You got your shit together. Exactly. It comes across, it's, it's a, um, they call that an honest signal. An honest signal is something that uh, is hard to fake. So what he's doing, <clears throat> even though what Julian's doing is really not complicated at all, actually. Or maybe it is, I don't know. <laughs> But like, it's not complex, um, but if they were to try to do it, especially watch, like at least you've been here to meet us, right? So now you've got to, I mean, a hope and a prayer to do it, but, um, but at the same, I mean, you're doing it. But at the same time, um, say you watch it on a video, it is a little bit hard to see that, and then to go out and do it, because they're like, I'm gonna do that joke thing Julian did, and it's like, you know, and then they just freak out, or at the slight second of getting approval, they're like, I got the approval, I got the approval, then they like clasp onto it. Yeah. Whereas Julian really is going for the self-amusement. Well, that, yeah, that's where all the subtleties come into play because you could hear that and then you're like, oh, I'm just going to do it. How's it going? Like, and it's like too aggressive. It's like all the subtleties and the vibe, like the soul, if you will, behind it, that's what makes it work. And you lack 1% of it, it can come off as try hard and horrible. And that's why it's so hard to learn this because most people, like just do the way that we're conditioned, we're trying to logically get it. We're like, let me logically understand it. But this stuff comes before words. It's pre-verbal. It's stuff you can't fully put into words because it's so complex. It's stuff you can only emotionally connect with. So a lot of game, too, in just socializing is getting in touch, one, with your emotions so you can see the differences. Like, I'm guessing a few of you probably didn't notice that much difference. You're like, what are they talking about? It's different? How? And it's common in um, products where I put out different interactions. Like, look at the difference. And people are like, I don't get it. Logically explain it. No, you need to get a feel for it and then get a feel for that within yourself and notice the little nuances. Because there are so many nuances. Like, just the talking, like as I call it, talking at the floor versus at the person. Instead of, hey, how's it going? Hey, how's it going? People don't get that. I made a video and people are like, what the fuck's that video about? You know? That is hard to put into words. The same with um, the hint of fun behind it or the looseness behind it. You can do like, hey, how's it going? Or even, no, talking to the ground but stifled. So, hey, how's it going? Versus, hey, how's it going? There's a little bit more air, a little bit more warmth, or the hint of a smile. Hey, how's it going? The little hint of a smile, the little twinkle, the spark. Tough to put into words. It's stuff you have to like grasp, and it's all those little nuances that really make it work, and that's also why we force like the place it's coming from, the mindset, the frames, because that's what takes care of it. Recognizing it is one, being very aware of it, but if you try to think of all those little details at the same time, you're done. Why do we like hammering on this stuff? Because it's a weapon that even the poor, even the people who have no advantages can implement fucking immediately. I love things like, um, like guerrilla marketing or things like learning social skills because me with the background that I came from that was so fucked up, these are skills that if you give me when I'm super fucked up, I can implement immediately. And it's based on effort, not on the luck of the genetic lottery or on the luck of uh, who, who's par who your parents are. You know, so when you see like someone coming from better parents or having some better genetics than you, things like guerrilla like gorilla marketing would be like a whole other video, but things like learning hardcore marketing, like and sales technique, which I, do you guys see my video this week that I did in, from New York and it was about sales technique and things like that? Some of you guys catch that? It was a great video. Um, but I love things like that. I'm super passionate about guerrilla marketing because 
anybody can do it. You can be broke and you can learn to make millions of dollars. I'm super passionate about social skills like this because you can go into a venue where you'd be completely intimidated and have so much fucking fun and make tons of high level, high leverage connections, get around better people, get new insights and inspiration, start holding yourself to a higher standard. And it, also stuff like this because when I see the conditioning that you guys have, I don't want you to live under that kind of conditioning for a long period of time. I want you out of it. You know, that's why I'm trying to apply negative leverage on you and give you shit about it and then have everybody cheering you on and clapping for you towards the end of the kind of like the happy ending vibe to it because I want you to experience life. You know, like I see you and I'm like, that, like, I value life. You're a human being. You're a human being. You guys, I don't, I, I want to say you deserve to have a good life. I don't know if that's quite the exact word. I feel that way. Like, I feel like you deserve to have a good life, you know, but at the same time, you, you, I'd say you deserve the opportunity to have a good life. Like, I love that about the American constitution. You have the right to the pursuit of happiness. It's not guaranteed. Okay. It's not fucking guaranteed. You're not waiting for the government to give you a fucking handout to make you happy. Fuck that. Right. I've never said I did. I made RSD to just make people happy. I made RSD to like, I'm not trying to, to drag you up the cliff. If you don't want to come up the cliff on your own, fuck off. But I'm trying to throw a rope. You know, I'm not trying to bring you through the forest, but I'll give you a map, right? You got to apply the map because your journey's in front of you for you to, to, to go on that journey. It's not for us to drag you to the fucking finish line. Um, as I say this in my backwards hat, this passion speech, um, you know, like it's not for us to drag you to the fucking finish line. It's for you to drag yourself to the finish line. But for, for both you guys, like before we, we give you this guidance, like did you even know about these things? No, I thought that was my norm, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and how about you? I didn't consciously realize it, but then I realized that's kind of how I care myself at work. It's mm -hmm. just kind of stay low under the radar, so. Yeah, you know. and, well, we'll, and well sadly in corporate environments, a lot of time that's rewarded too, bro. Right, so yeah. kind of condition under that environment. Just yeah. To, yeah, I can't work, so I dress like yeah. this. You sound then. amazing, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. You sound great. Yeah. 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 And by the way, I, I want to say too, it's like, I was just like you guys. I, Me too. I mentioned in my and seminar worse. too, it's like, I would have been a bad, I would have been like, not as smiley as if, as if you guys have a kid, I'd be the kid. <laughs> like not as smiley, but same kind of like a blend. I'm your kid. <laughs> yeah. no, no, so like, and, and by the way, and, and how do you remember it by the way? I can tell you how I remember it. I'd be curious how you remember it. I remember it fucking sucked if I gotta be honest. Oh dude, it felt like I was in a prison. Like I kid you not, it's like that feeling where, well, well probably the feeling <laughs> you, you had like right now up here, like not up here, like in reality, like I mentioned this, oh, I don't know if you heard, um, I'm in flight school and I feel like I'm in that social prison when I'm around like people mm. who are, I guess in a better status than me. Like I feel like I can't contribute to any of the conversations. I feel like I'm just trapped and I have no humor yeah. at all. And if I try to be funny, it's like fake and just, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, so now it's like, well, fuck, here it is. <laughs> yeah, you guys see him beginning to change? You guys see it? Yeah. He, he's beginning to change, right? Can you guys see him beginning to change? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, act normal like him and do it as good as him. Just kidding. So, um, yeah, do you want to do a couple? It's, it's true, like, I'll say the same exact thing. It's like, there's part of you that knows there's that gold inside, but you just can't. You know, it's like, do it, and you're like, Nothing comes out, and you're like, "What the fuck?" And then there's all that self-hate. Yeah. And uh, that was actually my very, the very first time I ever said hi to a girl. That was the feeling. It's like I could finally like break out of it, and I felt like you probably are right now. Where you're like, "Holy fuck, this was inside. I yeah, can do it." That's true. And um, it was my, just my, like my freedom. My first time like that, I was um, is when I started going out and meeting people, and I is when I actually did mass approaching. Um, sometimes I get criticized by people for teaching mass approaching because they're like, it's just spamming the whole room and da-da-da. And like, I get that. I'm aware of the criticism of it because some people feel that like you shouldn't have to talk to that many people. Um, and and I, I understand uh, that feedback. But I think for me, that was the only time that I ever did open up. And, and even now, frankly, at 38, if I just start talking to people and I just talk to fucking everybody, it just comes out. It's amazing. It's a great feeling when you talk to everybody. Bring this out, but then still be aware, as we discussed before, of the context. So for example, say um, you're at a certain party and you're like yelling and shit, it's not appropriate. Although, yeah, you're expressing yourself, you're low value because it shows lack of just general awareness. So there's always a context and a way to act that's appropriate. And the key, and this is super subtle, is act in a way that's appropriate to the context, but at a slightly different frequency. Okay. So what does that mean? It's like, say you take um, the dance floor of a club. As an example, there's the environment, there's the context. Everyone thinks that the way to go say hi to someone in the dance floor of the club is to be super high energy and like just kind of dancey as well and like, hey, hey, how's it going? Like that. When in reality, the person that's way more attractive where there's that like magnetic draw is the person who walks slow motion through the dance floor. 
Because the dance floor, like the frequency's here, slow motion, you're here. So say everyone's dancing like crazy and you're just like, Daddy's home. <laughs> daddy's home. Like, can you know, like, Daddy's home? Um, you'll stand out, and if you own it, like, there's that Daddy's home, that groundedness, that this is my reality, boom, they'll react immediately and adapt on your frequency. By that note as well, you could be in an environment where it's kind of chill, quiet, you're like very James Bondy, like Martini in hand. And if you're like, hey, da -da -da, like, Daddy's home, like, with a smile a little louder, they'll adapt onto that. So always kind of deviate a little bit from the set frequency of the environment, but not too much that it's just like unrelatable. Eh, unrelatable. It looks weird, like you're not socially aware of the temperature of the room. Yeah, and then it's combining those two things where it's like being aware of the context, but not being stifled by the context too. Can you also see how like for guys like me or Julian coming up or me being lightly autistic, this shit was like a foreign fucking language. It was completely foreign. I had no idea. So that's why it took me a number of years of going out to get a sense of it. Um, is anybody here feeling intimidated by the volume of information? Or are you feeling inspired, a bit of mix of both? How are you guys feeling right now? Inspired. Inspired, okay. Anybody here feel a bit overwhelmed? Like a little bit like, whoa? Because the reason we bring these guys up also, and they're um, you know, really making themselves naked to you, is because as you see the difference, it becomes more clear, right? Like if me and Julian are like, well, there's the beta sound and the hiding, you know, it's different than when you see it. Um, up front, right? And you could also see how if they don't fix this, and th I mean, I feel like they are, they're fixing it, it's in many ways fixed, but if they don't keep the momentum of that, the quality of their lives will be very different. Very, very different. And part of the reason that I feel that I've enjoyed a really incredible quality of life is having these skills. I walk into environments feeling at ease, like I'm just there to have fun, and let other people stress about getting to befriend you. And I really like that. You know, it's, been, it's really been a godsend for me being able to walk in anywhere and enjoy myself and not be in this fear state and then seeing other people in a fear state and you're kind of like, <laughs> right? It's kind of funny to watch, right? It's like when I was at the airport today and everybody's freaking the fuck out about their flights and I'm just chill. I'm seeing guys trying to push ahead in the line and they're so desperate and pathetic and their, mind, their, their reactive minds are so activated. And I think to myself, wow, if I hadn't taken a couple years of my life to study the ideas that Julian talks about in transformation mastery and Zen Buddhist type stuff and the presence work and Eckhart Tolle and all that kind of stuff, if I hadn't studied that, I'd be so pissed right now. I would be freaking the fuck out rather than just saying, you know what, this is the frequency of the fucking universe right now, let's roll with it. Let's go with the current, not against it, accept it for what it is, move with it. And um, it's just so, it's so crazy when you see people who don't get it, the degree of stress and limitation that they're dealing with because they've never taken the time to implement it. And so a part of your life has to be dedicated to implementing these kinds of ideas and not just understanding them in a video or even at a seminar here, but actually making an effort to go out and play with it, right? And the operative word here is play. Play with it. It's not like, oh, I'm shit because I have the beta male mannerism. Fuck that, that's called self-attack, fuck all that. What I would say, if anything, I mean, I'm kind of giving them a hard time up here because I'm trying to put leverage on them. Do you understand the technique of putting leverage? Do you see that? If you put pain on what you don't want and pleasure on the new one, it can create transformation. So I'm, that's why I changed my persona. And I've just taught that in live, uh, in field trainings for years, that's kind of how I do it, right? But what you're seeing here is them changing and if they make a decision to open up and to keep building on this and to play with it, not to self-attack, not to say I'm at a deficiency, not to say I'm crap, even though I gave you a hard time earlier. Not to say I'm crap, okay? Same thing with the, the sugar market, okay? If I say, don't be, okay? Just accept where you're at fully. Say this with me, accept where I'm at fully. Say it. Where I'm at fully. Say it. Where I'm at fully. And enjoy the journey, enjoy the journey. to becoming even, more awesome. becoming even more awesome. Play, say that word play. play. Okay, so you've gotta make a decision to play. Now, did you see us up here earlier with me and Julian playing with voices, trying different stuff, playing with it? It's not meant to be a drag or suck. It's meant to be fun. Are you catching this? Yeah. It's meant to be an enjoyable process. A lot of people are in such a deficiency and then if they go out and socialize, they get some negative reactions, it just fucks them. It completely mind fucks them. Um, rather than saying, I'm just learning a new skill, right? It's amazing too with um, something like basketball or hockey or a musical instrument that you can play and get the wrong note and then what do you think to yourself if you get the wrong note or shoot it a little off? What do you think to yourself? Try again. Try again. But what do you think with yourself with socializing or even in dating? What do you think to yourself? My value as a person is shit, I am garbage, I'm not meant to reproduce, I'm not meant to have friends. It's a massive self-attack loop that guys get into, which is really sad. Um, but I guess the good side of it is that because it's so hard to learn for most people, if you could just learn the basic level frame of enjoying it for what it is, then you get this insane advantage. 
I mean, it's an incredible advantage. And people will start saying to you, like, even if you're a funny looking person, like me, <laughs> then what you'll see is people will say, your energy's so good. I can't wait for that person to get here. The party starts when that person is here. I wanna hang out with them. You go to the table and people wanna go to your end of the table. They wanna join up with what you're doing. Maybe you run a business, they wanna join up with your movement. Maybe you make videos, they wanna watch your videos. Cause they're fun, they're enjoyable. It's not this fucking drag. Things in life can be easy or hard. You can choose to make it easy or you can choose to make it hard. This is Julian, and welcome to Transformation Massive. It was fucking amazing. This was huge for me. This was so, so important. This gave me by far the greatest happiness I've ever had. It just made me finally confront my deepest fears. And we got like real deep, and I found some issues within myself. One of the best things I've seen so far in my life. What you're about to experience going through this program is what completely changed my life on every single level, okay? Be it health, wealth, relationships, higher purpose, you name it, this is the stuff that finally, finally produced that true, long-lasting personal transformation we're all after, okay? Now, before we dive into what you can expect when you start your transformation and how this program works, because it is a completely new approach here with new methods designed to produce results for you fast, I want to share with you a little bit of the backstory of how Transformation Mastery came into existence. So I first got into this whole personal development, self-help world back in 2006 when I randomly found out about success with women and the fact that you can work on yourself and transform who you are into someone who is more confident, fun, attractive, playful, so on and so forth. Because up until that point, and I don't know if you know this about me, I was stuck, okay? I was completely stuck. I was at the bottom. I was someone who was anxious 24 seven, who was stressed out 24 seven, miserable 24 seven, paranoid. I couldn't put myself out there. I couldn't speak up. I wouldn't jump at opportunities. I was just living a very miserable existence. I was depressed. I was overwhelmed. I was drained, I had no energy, and it was straight up hell. You know, on a scale of one to 10, if I had to rate my experience of myself, it was a good three out of 10. And it's been like that as far as I can remember. You know, ever since I was a kid, like my earliest memories, it was like that. Like that was me and I had no hope. You know, I kind of came to terms with, hey, I guess this is just how things are. And I had my excuses, well, you know, I grew up in Switzerland. Maybe if I lived in America, things would be different. Maybe if I had cooler friends, maybe if I was better looking, maybe if I had, you know, I, I, this thing happened to me, if that person didn't screw me over, so on and so forth. And I just lived a hell of a life. And finding out about this whew, gave me that hope. I was like, whoa, I can actually have control over this. I don't have to stay a victim. I can step it up and change who I am. I don't have to accept this shitty reality, this shitty state of being. And I did, okay? I became obsessed with transforming who I am. And I optimized everything. I optimized my personality. I became more confident. I worked on becoming more funny, more playful, more extroverted, because I'm naturally introverted. Like this would be the scariest thing ever for me back in the day. Um, I optimized my life situation. You know, I was like, okay, well, I need relationships with friends, girls, okay? I need to travel, I need to, um, make money. I need to like really live a crazy life filled with these rich experiences. Let's optimize all of that. And I did. And I went all out. And in 2010, I started traveling the world and teaching literally tens of thousands of people, just like you and me, face to face, how to get unstuck as well, how to transform. And I went all out. You know, I perfected my teachings and I would see every type of person. Okay, at this point, I've done five to six world tours and my schedule is every single week, I'm traveling to a new city or country every single fucking week and I'm seeing new people with new issues. I'm seeing the different subtleties. I'm seeing the setbacks. I'm seeing what's going on and I would perfect my teachings, perfect how to snap them out of it, how to help them not just settle for that shitty state of being, but how to optimize it. Now, one thing that I noticed over the years, and this really troubled me, and I'd see it in my clients, but also in myself, is that although we would transform ourselves, transform our lives and achieve success, it always felt like we were fighting against something to get there, and any success that we would get, it would require a lot of effort to maintain. 
You know, it just felt like something kept pulling us back. Like we weren't meant to get the success. Like the system was rigged against us. And let me ask you this right now, if you've optimized different things in your life, does it feel like that? Does it feel like you're fighting against something? Like the system is somehow just rigged against you. And you can try to find a way there. You can really perfect the techniques, perfect the willpower and hustle your way there. But there's still that force field just kind of pulling you back, pulling you back to ground zero, pulling you right back into misery. And that's what I felt. And not just that, if you want to go really deep here, but underneath all of that success, all of the things I'd optimized, my personality, my life, I still felt the same. And this is how crazy this gets. And I'm sure you can relate right now, okay? Where you might have optimized a lot in your life. You might have worked on yourself, your personality. You might have worked on your financial success, gone a new job, gone a promotion, gone healthy, improved yourself, read a lot of books, so on and so forth. Just really optimize everything, trying to live a really rich, fulfilling life. However, underneath all that, underneath all that surface work, all that surface transformation, did anything really change? Or is it still that same old you? And this is something that would freak me the fuck out, where I'd have all this success and I'd fight to maintain it, a lot of effort, and then every once in a while I'd have a glimpse of that old me. If I just sat with myself and I did nothing and just brought that awareness into my body, it was still the same old me. It was still that three out of 10 underneath it all. And uh, it would freak me out to the point where I just kind of block it off. Like, oh, just don't pay attention to that. Because what that would mean is that everything that I had done, everything that I'd worked on and optimized was simply surface level work. It was just this big, you know, endless chase of shit that just didn't do anything. You know, it's mental masturbation if you think about it. You're just like, I'm doing all the success chasing this, yet nothing is changing deep down inside. It's not true transformation. And this is what I realized. In 2014, when I went through the most traumatic yet life-changing experience, which was the media scandal that I talk about a lot, where I pushed my marketing so far and eventually things popped and guess what? I did get pulled back. I see some comments from various people here about a fella called Julian Blanc. Julian Blanc. No, Julian Blanc. Julian Blanc. Blanc. Julian Blanc. Julian Blanc. You all know who Julian Blanc is. Yes. And although that was the worst experience of my life, it was also from this experience of just losing everything, because I lost everything, that as cliche as it sounds, I gained everything. Okay, because it forced me to stop distracting myself and just focusing on all this surface stuff, on all the external, on chasing more and more and more. And it forced me to let go of all that and even let go of the stuff that's keeping me of that three out of 10 and finally snap out and achieve that 10 out of 10. So let me explain, okay? This is how it works. Most people are stuck at the bottom, okay? They're stuck in a very shitty, miserable state of being. And that used to be me. You find out about personal development and you start optimizing yourself, you start optimizing your life. However, you're still optimizing trying to escape that shitty experience. Okay, so follow me here. At the bottom, everyone's experiences, scarcity, they're coping, it's a bad state to be. They try to optimize it by running away from that. But by running away from it, they're keeping it alive. Because any movement where you're running away from something is the continuation of that thing. By you trying to be more confident, you're keeping the fact that you're not confident to begin with alive. By you trying to be happy, you're keeping the fact that you're not happy alive. By me, for example, trying to improve my three out of 10 baseline, I'm keeping that three out of 10 baseline alive. So it's literally like that fucking movie, The Matrix, where you can either be in The Matrix and just suck. You're at the bottom, there's your life, that's you, suck it. Or you can try to improve your life, but you're still in the fucking Matrix. And that's why no one achieves true, deep, permanent transformation. Because it's just this surface work in The Matrix paradigm. And what I got out of going through that media scandal is that it snapped me out of the matrix. I had to literally drop everything and have this glimpse of another reality, another state of being, another paradigm 
not based on scarcity, but based on abundance. And that is the most life-changing moment ever. And this is what inspired Transformation Mastery. This is what got me obsessed ever since the end of 2014 up until now to create a program for you to experience that without the downside of going through a media scandal so you as well can snap out of the matrix. Loosen the fuck up, all out. Hey, like, what are you trying to do? This is about results. If you've been following my journey, what I've been teaching, I've always been about results. And this is the next level for you to fucking kill it and get more results. Because if you're coping, and follow me here, if let's just say one to 10, you're a three out of 10. Instead of coming from a solid platform of 10 out of 10 and then thriving and killing it in life, you're coping with this three out of 10. Everything you're doing is trying to compensate or escape it. A lot of energy, a lot of ah, paranoia, a lot of like waste is just going into this shitty state. I'm just trying to survive with it. And not only that, but guess what? You're addicted to this state. And this is what kept pulling me back and what kept pulling all of my clients back. So when you change this, okay, to 10 out of 10, that's your platform. You're no longer in scarcity, you're in abundance. You can thrive and just kill it even more and you cannot imagine the possibilities. As soon as I started incorporating this into my teachings for the past two years, the results have been so fucking drastic and so effortless. It's like they've been driving with the brakes on and those brakes are finally off and you're just free. I mean, imagine that, just walking out of your house right now, walking out of the front door and just being free not defensive, not coping, not worrying, not trying to escape it, not trying to numb it, not trying to stuff it down, just feeling fucking awesome and ready to attack life. Just fucking imagine. Loud as you can. I start, I just scream. Or what is it? Like, I scream as loud as Don't I can. Don't think, do. Ah! 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 Even more. Now talk! Bring it! Just don't think do! I fucking play League of Legends! Louder! <laughs> Dude, that was... That was it. I, I honestly couldn't have thought of a better example. It's like, oh, my passion, League of Legends! When I play Dota, like, that's what turns you on! <laughs> Yes, and now it's like that aliveness, like actually look at the crowd, that aliveness, the brightness in the pupils, the smile, the genuine smile, that's what you gotta connect with. If you look at me ever since the end of 2014, for the past two years versus the first eight years, 2006 to 2014, when I first got into this, those first eight years, I went all out. I became obsessed with transformation, but it's all about results here, okay? That's how you measure this. Look at me the past two years, the change, in terms of real world, real life results, these past two years, trump the first eight by a long shot. Like you can't even fucking compare. Those first eight years in terms of results, yeah, they're pretty fucking drastic, but now these last two, they're a fucking joke. And this is what I want for you. I want you to get your fucking foot off that brake pedal, start fucking killing it, start enjoying your results, start resonating with success. You don't have to fight this uphill battle where you're being pulled back and instead you start being pulled towards your goals and you can finally feel fucking awesome and at peace inside. Okay, so it's starting with the deep work so you can then kill it with the surface work. Close your eyes and think back to one of those moments you put yourself out there and uh, you know someone just really shamed you for what you were feeling or shamed you for what you were thinking. You know, they told you it was not okay, um, that part of you was rejected, um, you know, you felt maybe embarrassed, you felt upset, maybe self-hate kicked in because you shouldn't be feeling that. You're like, what's wrong with me? Why am I feeling that? Why is that coming up? And just kind of replay the scenario and just replay like all those sensations. Like how did you feel if you were anxious, if you were angry, just kind of what came up and what do you feel in your body right now? Just kind of replaying it. Do you feel hurt, betrayed, 
upset, embarrassed, stupid, hating yourself, beating yourself up. Just tune into it and just let it come up. So what's in Transformation Mastery and how does this all work? And the first thing I want to stress here is that it is a very experiential approach. Okay, this isn't a program where you go through it and you memorize every little bit of content, every little idea trying to transform that way there. Instead, you go through this program and you let the content change what's inside. And you will notice the deeper you go into this program, the more little subtleties you're gonna start experiencing inside. And I've broken down Transformation Mastery into three main parts. There's part one, which is awareness, part two, which is proof, and part three, which is permanence. And in part one, this is where we really focus on snapping you out of this socially conditioned, scarcity-based reality. We're going to examine different paradigms. We're going to examine and question assumptions you've never questioned before and assumptions you didn't even know you were making. We're going to examine cause and effect. And here, I really want to reprogram your brain, reprogram your understanding of yourself and the world. And just by this first section, and this is how crazy it gets, you're gonna have epiphany after epiphany just exploding in your head and the changes will already start happening. And this is content and ideas you've never heard before. Um, they can be hard to swallow, but you gotta choose here. Do you wanna stay in this shitty reality? Is it the blue pill or the fucking red pill? Which one are you gonna take? Take it, swallow it, and then let's fucking do this. That's the first section. The second section is proof. And this is where I get you to experience everything that we talked about. You experience it firsthand through a guided release. And this is something that's completely new. I've never released anything like it before where you're going to sit down and it's a guided form of meditation that will get you to snap out of this reality, get you to snap out of the matrix. That's how crazy this gets. And just by this guided release, you will have that proof inside of you. You will finally have that glimpse just like me going through a worldwide media scandal, but you will have it from the comfort of your own home. And the third section is permanence, and that's where we go deep into your subconscious, which is another topic most people don't tackle, and this is where a lot of these assumptions and a lot of the things that are keeping this scarcity-based reality, that are keeping you at this shitty default state, that's keeping that alive, are buried in there, and you need to let go of those and release them. That's how you make this permanent. So awareness, you get what's happening. Proof, you have that glimpse. Permanence, we dive into your subconscious, we dive into your childhood, different traumas, different recurring patterns in your life. We break those patterns so you're no longer a prisoner, you're no longer living in reaction, and we completely free you and make this new reality, this new paradigm permanent. And I didn't just stop here. I've also added two extra guided releases where there's a morning release and an evening release and these are releases that I personally listen to every single day. It's the first thing I do when I wake up. I put on the headphones, I listen to this release. I go to bed, I put the headphones on, I listen to this release. Just doing that, just the two guided releases, your life will drastically change. And the fifth section here is transformational in-field footage. Well, it's usually in school, um, not remembering what to say. Um, getting back bad grades or uh, yeah. criticism or um, in groups, social groups, gatherings, um, just people not liking me, I think. Um. So as you can see here, there's a lot more intense sensations that are surfacing. You know, she's getting a lot more emotional and that's because we're going deeper and deeper into the fear. And this is where it gets really crazy because what you're going to see in this section is all of these ideas and concepts illustrated with real life examples, with people just like you and me in action, and you're going to see me break it all down. So it'll give you a lot more context and help you apply it to yourself. Where if, for example, we talk about resistance, you can hear me break down resistance, and I will say, it's going to show up in this way here, in this way here, in this way here, in this way here. You're going to resist snapping out of the matrix. And you can understand it, and you'll know how to go through it, but if you see someone else experience that resistance and you see me break it down and show you how it pops up and how subtle it is and how I help that person 
still blast through and finally let go and snap out of it, whew, now you know what to fucking do. Now you have no excuse. And not only that, but now you're inspired because you feel what they're feeling in these videos. This is where it gets really tough. It's like that thing you keep running away from, that's the shit you got to dive into. He just said this, he, he didn't want anything serious and he was probably just uh, feeling like pushed into a corner and, had, and stressed out and under pressure. Mm -hmm. And how did you feel after he left and after he said that? Not worthy of being in a relationship, of give, getting love or um, um, yeah, having people tell you that you're great or that you're worth of receiving love. So going deeper here, it's not feeling worthy of being loved. I fear not pleasing him. You can stay there and focus on that, but that's still surface. Go deeper. I fear losing him. I fear not being worthy of being loved. And I've also added a private Facebook group where you can network with other people going through this process, share your experiences, and really accelerate your transformation. Now, if you're really, really serious, about transforming here, I've also created the transformation series. And this is a six months curriculum where every month we're going to tackle a theme. And we're gonna start with apathy and self-hate. And we're going to move up all the way to self-love and self-acceptance. It goes apathy, self-hate, month one. Guilt, self-sabotage, month two. Fear and self-trust, month three. Purpose and procrastination, month four approval and validation, month five, and self-love and self-acceptance, month six. And with each month, you're going to get one content video, one transformational infield video, one Q&A webinar where you can ask me any questions based on the theme of that month. And at the end of that webinar, you're also going to get a guided release done live based on your questions and based on the theme. So every month, we're going to have this guided release based on the theme, for example, fear, self-trust, you know, self-love, self-hate, purpose, procrastination. Those are huge. How to stop procrastinating. You'll have the content, you'll have the infield footage, the Q&A webinar, and the live release. This is the transformation series. This is if you're really serious about this. And I've also created the exclusive book club series where for three months, Every month, we're going to tackle three of the most impactful books I've ever read. These are the top three books that just really hit me at a deep level. And we're going to have a webinar about the book where I'm going to be sharing my thoughts and how it impacted me and how it even impacted Transformation Mastery. And then we're gonna go back and forth and I'm going to answer your questions on those books. So this is Transformation Mastery. This is how it all works. And this is what will completely change your life, just like it did for me at every single level. <laughs> okay, and uh, again, this is my masterpiece, this is it. Like this is, you know, not to get too morbid, but if I died right now, this would be the thing I'd leave behind. This is my mark on the world. Um, I mean, yeah, like I, this is it, <laughs> you know? So if you resonate with this, if you wanna transform, if you want to snap out of the matrix, if you're just sick of having that shitty experience of yourself underneath it all, no matter what you get, no matter how much success you get, did anything change? You know, for me, before that scandal, by the way, I had everything I thought would make me fulfilled, happy. I thought I had everything that would change that baseline. I was traveling, I had the girls, I had the fame, I had the money, everything. Yet, nothing changed and it just freaked me out. This is what finally produced that. Change your baseline. Kill the self-sabotage. Stop being pulled back. Stop making things harder than they need be. Make things easier on yourself so you're fulfilled, you're happy, you're coming from a good place, and you can just fucking kill it. That's transformation mastery. If you want that, you wanna snap out, you wanna see something that, being straight honest here, 99% of people will never see. You wanna see the other side, you wanna see what's beyond the Matrix, 
beyond scarcity, beyond this? I mean, really ask yourself, is this really life? Like, is this all that life is? Because if so, I mean, what the fuck? That was a question I'd also ask myself. Even growing up, I'm like, is this life? Like, I always felt something was a little bit wrong with me. Like, I'm like, why do I feel so shit? Like, is this life? Is this, like, why I'm here? And I'd look around, and everyone else was just as miserable as me. If you go out in the street, when's the last time you saw someone who's just bright and just thriving and alive? There's that light in the fucking pupils. My dad is never. <laughs> like, never. Is that life? Is that what life should be? Is that the life you want for you? And if the answer is no, if enough's enough, scroll down, click the link, and I'll see you in Transformation Mastery. Join the tribe, join the movement, and let's wake up.